Who's here? Here, see who shows up. Everybody see okay? I think that'll work tonight. Let's see if anybody shows up today. See what's going on. It's 8 o'clock. Do I have paint brushes? Gonna have to paint these Santas. I'm hoping all this comes in. We got four people here. I don't see anybody in the chat. What's going on, guys? My chat's not moving. Somebody say something so I know if you're here. It says we got four people. Somebody say something so I know if you're here. It says we got four people in. I'm just having coffee waiting for anybody to come in. Oh, there's somebody. Hey. There you go. <laughs> You actually sold. That's awesome. What's your first name? Our boss here. What's up, Chris? That's what I do. I sell them. I sell them for whatever I can get. You know, you know how those people like to barter, right? You go into a flea market or a show. Right now, the Christmas shows. The Christmas shows are really, really uh, good. And they're all coming up. And when you go to those Christmas shows and you bring a bunch of Santa Clauses, little ornaments, you can move them from five bucks to 40 bucks. You know, it depends on how nice you make them. But that's awesome that you actually, it's Rocky. That's right. Okay. I got to tell that story there, Rocky. Say so you went to a show and you sold a whole bunch of them, huh? Knocked a coin out of a tree. <laughs> no problem. I told you it's amazing, isn't it? All right, we got Chris in here. We got Rocky. We got Stephen. Welcome. Yeah, I did finish the Santa. The Santa, actually, the Santa's right here. Zoom. Now I gotta paint them. I didn't paint them yet because I'm still. Uh, I started walking around. What's up, Laura? But I gotta walk around a little bit more. I got some footage today on that. It was really cold out. And looking around for stuff that we can find something to make on eBay. I did grab a bunch of stuff. But I want to find some more. I want to find some different stuff. You know, uh, something really interesting. So we are going to do that. But we are going to set up a new challenge. And we'll take donations for uh, prizes. Maybe we can give away a couple of prizes, you know, and I'll... See what I can come up with myself to give away besides prizes we can buy, like a new Dremel for somebody or something like that. But I want to do starting now, make make anything Christmas. All right. It doesn't have to be a certain thing. I mean, I'm gonna teach ornaments and we'll do some Santas. We're gonna start doing that from now all the way up to Christmas. 
and then we'll draw names out of the hat. You know, I don't want to talk too much till everybody comes in, but uh, that's what we'll do. And a couple of days before Christmas, we'll pick some numbers. It depends on how many prizes we have, you know, and we'll give some stuff away for Christmas. But we're definitely going to do the eBay challenge also. That's just, it's not even really a challenge. It's just an experiment. We're just going to carve stuff and everybody wants to do it with me. I'll list uh, one thing, you know, and everybody will see who, who wants to do it too. And we'll all list something on eBay and, you know, see what we get. You know, but I know uh, you got your coffee. <laughs> I got my, mine's going to be, you know, but I know. Uh, you got your coffee? <laughs> I got my, mine's going to be cold. <clears throat> I should, <clears throat> excuse me, I should put a coffee pot in here, but I just finally moved enough room in my shop just so I can sit and card for the winter. Moved enough stuff around. So expect a lot of videos. Guys. I'm going to start doing ornaments, Santa Clauses, whatever, you know, whatever we can think of. Because <laughs> that's all I needed. I needed to put up some little extra dust collecting system and like i said jordy uh jordy johnson over at carpet fusion put his dust collector video on and that just reminded me oh wow i got a board and so i went i got my board and i set that up and i just put a video up on youtube about that because uh jc was asking me and then three or four other people were asking me what i was using so I got to tell Jordy wasn't trying to copy a video, but people are asking what I did because he showed his video. Might as well show the uh, what I use. Because all you got to do is keep that dust out of the air, man. That little fine dust. Cottonwood bark, you grind it. Have you ever tried to do it? You guys, without a dust collector? <laughs> did you see the cloud you get in the air of this stuff? So you need something to suck that dust up, you know? But it's really cool. Rocky here is in the house and he just messaged me earlier and he's confirming it again. He took, uh, how many did you take, Rocky? You take 40? Yeah, about 40 carvings. He sold them from five to 25 bucks. Remember we were talking about that in the last live? He went to a show. And uh, within five hours, he said he came home with $700. Like I said, you start carving these things, you get good. You make them in 10 minutes. You put them in a box, you take them to a show. Paint them up. Make one a week even. There's another good tip. Uh, during Christmas, <clears throat> usually all year, what I was doing before when I was doing a lot of Santa Clauses, what I would do was every week, you know, once a day, because I was making them so fast with the sanding drum or, you know, a Dremel, just sit there and whack out an ornament and throw them in a box. One a day. You know, paint them up on the weekend or whenever you get a chance. But if you do that all year, and then when Christmas comes around, you take them to a show, <laughs> you got a big box of ornaments, you know, and you can come home with a lot of money and just move them out, you know. And there's plenty of craft shows around. Yeah. Yeah, that dust is like flour, isn't it? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to do a lot of other Santas. We're going to do Santas. Yeah, I'll show you how to make simple ones. We could do a fancy one, you know, but the whole idea is to be able to just grab your Dremel, grab a piece of wood, make a stick. For years, the Santas I was selling were just sticks, sticks from my yard. Uh, I'm not kidding. I would just go out, literally grab little sticks this big, carve a Santa on it. And again, put it on eBay, $14.95, whatever. And I was shocked at some of the prices I got. And so... So I really want to show you guys that because Santa collectors, well, Rocky can confirm it now. You go to a Christmas show, those people will buy it. They love Santas, right? I mean, 700 bucks for five hours, that's not bad. Probably a bunch of stuff that was sitting around for quite a while, too. What's up, Clay? <laughs> Clay popping in. Yep, and this right here is the Santa that we just finished. I have to paint him. It's hard to see with the light on him. I just put a new light in, too, so. Busy, busy. But that was that cottonwood bark piece. And he's he's bigger than an ornament. You see how big he is? You know? I mean, an ornament's a little tiny thing. But he's, he's pretty good size. He's just a chunk of cottonwood. It's, it's not really big enough to do a lot with, but 
So I made kind of like a wall hanging with that guy. A big ornament. <laughs> Thanks, Clay. But yeah, make yourself some, get a shop back, make yourself a little board. If you want to carve inside, I believe that was, that was JC that was asking me about that. And uh, that's why I made that video because he specifically asked for it. He wanted to see how I set it up. And But really, I just bought a shop back last year and I bought the 12 gallon one, like I was showing in the video. And the 12 gallon shop back, I think, I, as a matter of fact, I just put it in my store uh, in the Amazon link in the description my amazon store if you want the same shop back i just saw it on amazon it's, it's 135 bucks i saw it on amazon again in another listing for 180 so there's a 135 dollar one in there it's the 12 gallon 6.0 i think and all you got to do is get the little coupling and like you can look for another box uh they have the little box of hoses that i showed and you put that in the flashing of a chimney flashing because it comes with a hole. You get a piece of, it's actually a little piece of sheet metal and it's got a little cone on it and then a rubber gasket in it where they put the vent really for the chimney in there. And it just slips over that vent. Well, I took the shop back and stuck it in that hole and then duct taped it so nothing, you know, could escape. Flip the board back over and you got a dust collector, you know. So, and it, and it works. I mean, you've seen how it takes it. You can't see the basswood when I carve it, but you can see the dust going from the cottonwood bark right down it in the video. You'll see how good it works. Angel bark. What's angel bark? I never heard of that. What are you talking about, Chris? Angel bark. <laughs> yeah, well, a shop back's going to work real good, Clegg. It's going to work real good on little stuff like that. Um, it, it's really just fine dust. So if you have a good seal on it, the reason I just made a board is because I literally used to put that board on my lap. And I'd just sit in my chair, have the board on my lap. I'd sit back and just, you know, <laughs> and it would just suck the dust right out. Because without it, boy, it's just in the air. And, you know, it doesn't take much vacuum to, to get that dust to go down. You know, it's real light dust. And basswood dust, cottonwood bark, you know, is real fine dust too. But basswood, basswood hurts your lungs, man, when it gets in. It's got all them little fibers in it. But you can't really see it on the video when I when I, I noticed that. That's why I did a piece of cottonwood bark, too. So you can actually see that brown dust getting sucked down. What's up, Ava? There's Ian. Yeah, I got to find out that girl in Alaska. I know everybody... Uh, was buying cottonwood bark off of her. I'm hey, I'm in the definitely in the market for some cottonwood bark. Topper Truthio. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Covered her car in sawdust, Huckley. <laughs> Yeah, go rig one up. You can carve right in your room, you know, as long as you can get that, you know, to go down. Sometimes you don't want to hold it up here. It actually helps to tilt the board. If you can tilt the board, you can lean it up against it. It's almost standing up. The dust seems to go in really good. I don't like my board really flat. I like to tilt it. But this board that I made, I just kind of, well, you saw in the video, I just clamped it to the table with two clamps. I'm drinking coffee on it right now. <laughs> Where are you from, Topper Fruitio? Chat slow. It takes a while if I ask you a question for it to go up, so.
<laughs> You're watching me carve in your doctor's office. <laughs> hey, nothing better to do, right? <laughs> Hope your checkup went well. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, that Santa wasn't, uh, I mean, you could carve Santa's a lot better. I was just trying to come up with something and try to keep it in the camera and, you know. But any little pieces, though, once you start doing Santa's, they're great. You can always make an ornament out of a little piece this big, you know. I want to get the other set up. Now I have to figure out, I have to figure out how to have two cameras going so I can actually read what you guys are saying. But the other camera is looking down and I can be carving. So that way we can do some stuff during a live, you know. Well, I mean, I got something in my mouth. It's probably a piece of sawdust. But once I can figure that out, then we'll start doing live carvings because I can't hold it up and do it like this, you know. But uh, I'll ask Jordy about it. Jordy knows. He does it all the time. I think he uses an iPad or something, and he reads on the iPad. But I don't like if I go live on both cameras, I guess, because I wouldn't be able to put my phone here and tape, which is what I would do, and be able to read what you guys are doing, you know. I'd have to have the chat come up on my PC or something so I could read it, and then I could film with the other camera when i do that we'll make ornaments you know live i want to do live zoom meetings uh, zoom classes would be very cool up here uk there you go there you go it took that long for the chat see so you're in the uk huh that's awesome He's carving in his driveway. That's why the dust is getting on the car. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Yeah, send me a DM. I'll buy some bark. Is it pretty thick? I like good thick pieces of bark. <laughs> Santa's the only man, though, you let climb into your house. God, no, I'd let Ed McMahon climb into mine with one of them big, fat publisher's clearinghouse checks. <laughs> he could come in. Anyone else? Uh, probably not a good idea, unless they're invited. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Topper, the same thing. You try coming in my house, you got to get past a hundred-something pound hunting dog. Plus, you have to get past the well, me, and I don't really uh, take to somebody walking in my house, especially in the middle of the night. Could you imagine somebody walking in your house in the middle of the night? I'm not going to be nice, and I'm not going to ask questions. You know, that'll be afterwards. <laughs> I hope I know you, and it was an emergency. <laughs> A chunky, <laughs> chunky stuff. So who do we got? 12 people. What we're going to do is still like it. We're, we're going to have an eBay challenge, not a challenge, but I went walking around today. I'll be putting some videos on there, finding some stuff. I'm going to find a couple of other pieces. I'll show you the types of wood I'm talking about that if you want, that should go pretty good on eBay. Uh, I was down by the river today, but it was really cold. But we're going to find some really cool stuff, and we're going to carve it. And the more interesting the piece you can find, the more interesting of a carving it is. That's all, you know. Or you could just take a regular piece of wood and make what you want. But it's always, if you find a found wood, to find a piece that's got some kind of natural curve to it, some gnarly look to it in one way or another you know and we'll still do that and there's rob what's up rob mark anthony's in the house didn't get his big owl yet but i know rob got his wood spirit from the last challenge and sword at midnight meaner than the dog yeah <laughs> A bing sword, <laughs> Rob. 
<laughs> That's an inside joke with me and Rob. My wife swings the sword. Uh, I teach Kung Fu. And 47 years now. I started when I was real young. I was a kid. So I teach 42 different weapons. You know, so I can fight. That's what I was saying before. If somebody would come in my house, it's not a good idea. You'd have to pass all the swords on the wall and any one of them. I mean, I got so many different types of things in my house that can hurt you. It's not a good idea. But I taught my wife how to fight. I mean, I got kids. <laughs> you know, everybody does Kung Fu. Probably not a good idea to rob my house. <laughs> right, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> and my dog itself my dog himself i got a hunting dog he's a german short hair and he goes up about 100 pounds so straight twigs <laughs> oh they're probably good sellers right <laughs> topper <laughs> Hey, you finally got the time right. You missed the whole drawing last week, Mark Anthony, and you won it. I'll tell you what, from now on, you want to know? I wasn't going to say it. I told Rob and Jordy had asked me, the next time we do a giveaway, <laughs> and it's a chainsaw carving, <laughs> I am not going to ship out of the country. You know what we'll do? You'll win what the carving's worth, but that costs $325, tell your wife, Mark. $325 to ship that owl to you because you're in New Zealand. So tell her she got an expensive owl. That's more than what I would sell that owl for. <laughs> Guaranteed. Yeah. So. You done, Mark. I teach Chinese Kung Fu. Plus Aikido and Jiu Jitsu. Sikaru Jiu Jitsu. I hold two black belts in those. <laughs> <laughs> Tell your wife she better love you a whole bunch, Mark. She better love me even more. <laughs> New Zealand. So from now on, if you win again, Mark, if you're one of those Jess Carr Rob guys, if the carving's like 65 bucks or something, you get the 65 bucks, not the carving. <laughs> Ah, it's a shame. Yeah, that'll put an end to your martial arts career. <laughs> an accident. I know I didn't train for about three months because I had a roller skating accident and tore all the ligaments off my knee. Never hurt myself in martial arts or tournaments and <laughs> the stuff I went through all my like roller skating of all things. It set me set me back for three months. But how many people actually tried a Santa yet? Because we're gonna start uh we're going to start carving them. I'm going to put some videos on. I'm going to look for a piece of uh, piece of wood to do Santa on. Maybe I'll get some basswood. And we'll do a couple different projects. You know, we'll see what happens. Uh, matter of fact, I got, I got walking sticks behind me I have to finish for Christmas. That one, this one right here, this guy's been going around. I keep making different faces on this guy. The light's kind of drowning out the shadows, but can you see those? Look at this. He's carved <laughs> all the way down. There's good, keeps getting more and more. He's even a face at the bottom. I gotta, I gotta finish. See that? And he's got like leaves starting on these sides. This side right here is getting a little bit more carved. I mean, <laughs> I don't know how many faces are on there. What do you think? What do you guys think I could get for that? I mean, that's solid cherry. And it's all picked at with my knife. Every day I, I would whittle a new face on it. So I got to stain that. I got to put all the detail in the beards. I got to bling it out, maybe wrap some leather. I don't, I don't know quite what I'm going to do with that yet, but I've done a lot of those. But that would be a that'd be a heck of a Christmas gift for somebody, huh? Put a rubber bottom on it, leather strap through it. Thanks. Around 40 bucks, Rob. 
Well, you were definitely not going to get a chance to win it, Rob, in no contest. That took too long. <laughs> You're scared to do more than one thing. That's how you get better. I'll tell you what, Clay, you start at the top, and by the time, even if you screw it up, by the time you get to the bottom, you're a master at making that little face. <laughs> you know, it ain't going to take much. Seven seven to 12 faces, you'd be, you'd be blasting them out with your knife in no time. You're working on one, Ian. I should have actually made it. Well, they are all different, you know, but uh, when you look at it just from the way it is, it looks like it's all the same. I just had a nice cherry stick, and I figured I'll make a walking stick. And then the next day, I, was, well, I guess I'll whittle another face. They're only this big. But you figure, even if it's, I don't know, even if you said 25, 35 bucks a face, there's got to be how many faces? One, two, three, four. There's about 11 faces on there. 10 or 11. So... That's a pretty expensive stick. Yeah. You know, I could probably sell that stick if I really, if I did all the leaves and started really making things fancy and a nice stain, I could probably, probably get six, seven, eight hundred dollars. It depends on where I sold it, you know, just for making wood spirit faces on it. But it is all cherry. That'll stain up nice. You know, the other one's just a big piece of the cedar stick. I'm still peeling the bark. I got the face carved up here, but I'm peeling all the bark off the bottom yet. I'm going to finish that. You know, so that's that's another one. See, basic wood spirit face. That's all. Nobody can even see it real good. The light doesn't do uh, carvings any justice. I did put a new light in here, so it's right above my bench. That's going to... And I got them there so they remind me to keep working on them. Oh, yeah. I'd, I'd get 500 bucks for that. So I've already had people ask me. They come and they buy owls now and then and they see the stick. Because <laughs> they're outside under the tent usually. Said, How much for that stick? And I said, oh, it's going to be at least five or six. Oh, I bet it is. Yeah, you got to let me know when that's done. All right. Well, you want to pay that money, I'll let you know. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, I've seen people make one walking stick and they stain it, you know, and they, they'll they make it nice and shiny and everything and put a rubber bottom on it, but it's not really a fancy stick. And then, oh, I want $900 or $1,200. $1,200. Maybe if you're stain it sticks, yeah, then it's worth the $1,200 price, you know. I mean, he does a lot of work. But you're just going to do one little carving, a, a pot leaf or something. I see, you know, oh, that sticks, you know. <laughs> Give me a break. You know, that stick's got 10 or 13 faces. I mean, I could put faces all the way down the other end, the other side. And then vines going up, maybe a couple of little salamanders or lizards on it. I mean, I could keep going. There's a lot of stick left. Yeah, cherry's pretty hard. Oh, yeah. Yep. And it depends. If you get choke cherry, there's choke cherry and there's regular cherry. You know, and they're both hard, though. I mean, Dremel carve it. Dremel carve it. If you want to pick at it with knives and chisels, though, you're going to be, you're going to be pushing. <laughs> you know, I mean, my knife will sit there and carve that, but it's not easy, you know, and I'll take a little gouge and go into the, to do the eyes and stuff. But man, trying to use a V tool on it, oof, you got to really make sure that you know what you're doing and wear a glove because it's going to be, you know, that's, that's how they carve. They're tough. You done plowing, Rob? Are you still there? Where's Rob? Diamond Willow's good. Diamond Willow's good. Uh, real expensive. You make walking sticks out. That stuff shines up. I love Diamond Willow. You carve some of that stuff. It is hard, but you carve diamond willow and then you put a finish on it. Man, it's like glass, isn't it, Clay? That's Clay, right? Yeah. Diamond willow sticks. I just had a guy. Uh, he bought he bought a carving from me. 
I think a year or two ago. He said he's been promoting my stuff. He just called me and said he's making swords and he makes these fancy ornate walking sticks and he puts Viking runes on them and he wants to send, bring me like 10 or 12 of them and let me put faces on them because they're, they're, I guess his whole thing is a Viking theme. And I said, I, I could put Vikings on them. I don't care. Sure, do it. Bring them. You know, I'm all about getting those. Give me 10 or 12 and make it an ongoing thing. I'll do it every week. That's that's what I like. You have Diamond Willow, Rob? Did you? Are you making any money snow plowing? Do you plow for money, Rob? I thought you were plowing for money. Or is it just your driveway? Because you got 12 inches up there already. New York got hit with six feet of snow. Buffalo, I think, was it Buffalo? Buffalo, New York. Over six feet of snow and more on the way. <laughs> Could you imagine? That's over my head. <laughs> imagine plowing that, Rob. Just your driveway? Uh, I thought you actually went out and plowed. You know? I, I was listening to Glenn, you know? <laughs> Ain't you plowing, Rob? I thought you actually plowed and made extra money doing driveways and stuff. <laughs> I got to talk to Jordy. I want to find out how to do chat and carve at the same time. How that sets up. Jordy will know. Like I said, I'm new to this stuff. I don't know. I don't know how it works. <laughs> I'm lucky I'm, I can see myself. But if anybody didn't see it, this is the Santa that we made. All right. This is the ornament. It's not. I guess it's, it's still an ornament. It's just like. An ornament on steroids. He's pretty big, you know, six inches. Is that what he is? I'll tell you. He is. Actually, believe it or not, he's an inch and three quarters thick. All right. And he's, you know, he's about six and a half inches up and down. All right. So that's pretty big. And he's four inches wide. Okay. So. I mean, you hang, you just hang on the wall up against something, you know, and as a like a Christmas decoration. So we'll we'll paint him up. That'll be another, another video. But we'll make some others, and we'll make them look even more Santa Clausy. Actually, when I started him, I wasn't really planning on a Santa, so I just kind of turned him into one. Your old bluff truck would die, huh, Rob? <laughs> well, I'm gonna have to get the shovel out, Rob. Go make some money. It's not like you were selling those Halloween carvings. You're keeping them and putting them on your deck. I saw them. <laughs> yeah, you need some big Christmas trees to hang him on. He'll do like, you don't want to hang him like at the tip of the tree because then you'll have a Charlie Brown tree. The tree will just bend right down. <laughs> you know? That's what will happen. He's, he's pretty heavy. Yeah, I still wear my dust mask. I'm not trying to be a cowboy. This I actually use. People say, are you a cowboy? Yeah, right. <laughs> Who said that? Yeah, they do, Rob. You could sell that stuff. I seen your pumpkins. They look cool. You do. Look at Rocky in there. You weren't here when Rocky told me. Rocky was in the last live. He went to his show. He brought about 40 carvings and he sold them cheap. Five, 10 bucks, 25 bucks for the bigger ones. He, five hours, he made 700 bucks. Don't tell me you couldn't bring them to a show and get rid of them, Rob. Quit saving them. You're doing that. I made that. I spent too many hours on that. I'm going to keep it. That was my buddy, Dan. He spent three weeks making a carving <laughs> for a month and we're going to a show. I brought 40 owls to a show. It was a fair. Right. And Dan brought, I don't know, he had, he didn't have half of that, but he had a few, you know, but he wanted all this money because it took him, you know, so he came home with like two or $300. You know, I came home with three grand because I was like 45 bucks. Take it. I was making them in 15 minutes with the chainsaw. Take it. 45 bucks. Take it. 45 bucks. Get rid of it. I'll make another one. I don't want to marry it. <laughs> you know, I want to move it. Dan was like, oh, I, but I made that. It took me so long. Well, learn how to do it faster and quit picking at it. And I mean, it's just not going in a museum. 
It's only wood. It's a log. You could. There's plenty more. You know, grab it, make it, move it. Especially your chainsaw carvings. You guys know that. You make a chainsaw carving. Sell it before it starts cracking, and then you won't sell it because <laughs> it's gonna crack. <laughs> right? How many people have made chainsaw carvings, and it's really awesome. And the next thing you know, you go outside. Two, three days later, and it's got a big old crack going up. That's why you got to learn how to fix cracks. Worst thing about chainsaw stuff. That's what I hate. I, you just can't stop it from cracking. It's going to crack. You can put finishes on it that really helps and carve really good wood that's seasoned and dry, but it's still going to it's going to get cracking. <laughs> Rob never stops talking to himself, Chris. <laughs> Yeah, that was a pretty good size bark for it. And it was only, you know, <laughs> this big. I'm like, what am I going to do with this? It's flat and it's thick. It was like a little plaque, you know. If you watch the video, watch the first one again. Look how flat it was. It was just this little thick piece of bark, but flat. So now he's an ornament, you know. I definitely want to talk to that lady, though. Send me those details because I need some cottonwood bark. Otherwise, I'm going to have to buy a big box at cottonwoodbark.com. <laughs> what do you use your carvings for target practice, Rob? <laughs> Don't put that wood spirit out there. I just sent you. Send it back. I'll send you plenty that you can, you can shoot at for target practice. I got a lot of junk laying around. <laughs> the eyes break out. Where's that one I just had? I was using it for demos. You know, the eyes break out on them and everything else. And I go, oh, what am I going to do with that? And I throw it to the side. I have it somewhere. You know, I don't know which one it is. I don't know. I stuck it somewhere. But I think it's this one. Yeah, see this? This one right here would have been a pretty decent face. But there's a big rotted spot. In his eye. One of these eyes. And the eye just all broke out. So I was going to take his face down. and Now I'm going to put another little one up here. You know, start him. But sometimes you just get a rotten piece. And there's a little bad spot in it. You know. It's fun when you go to a show. Huh, Clay? Yeah, Rocky had a ball, I bet. It's fun when you start getting that money in your hand. They're like, oh, it's beautiful. Oh, And they think they get it. And the thing is about those things is uh, you never know. Something this small, if you make it really nice, it could go up really good money. And then other times you have things this big and you say, hey, give me 15 bucks. Take it. You know, I don't want it. Because you need room in your shop, you know, or you, you're just not going to sell it. You can hang on to it. It ain't going to do you no good. <laughs> But five hours, 700 bucks, you can't beat that. You know, like I said, I've gone to fairs that were a week long. And I've seen some people at fairs make five, ten thousand dollars $10,000, you know, for the whole week at a fair. You know, of course, it costs you seven, eight hundred bucks to get a spot there. <laughs> but it depends on the crowd and the economy and what you're making. But Rocky did good at that show. That was awesome. I'm happy for him. Wow, eight foot long. There's Rocky now. An eight foot long piece of cottonwood bark. How how wide is it? See, now something like that, I'd get my bandsaw out. I wouldn't make one big giant carving unless you have a project in mind. I would cut that thing all up in a little and then sell a whole bunch of different ones, you know. As I used to buy bark that would be two feet long and I'd cut it into 12 inches. And a lot of times if I only had enough money to buy a box set, I could only buy six pieces, you know, that were 12 inches. I'd cut the 12 inches in half and make a little six inch bark ones and still sell them for $40 each, you know. So this cottonwood bark is, but if it doesn't grow around you, cottonwood bark. Uh, trees and you can't get the bark you can spend a lot of money buying it you know 
That's why I wish it did grow around here. Trust me. <laughs> but if you can, you can just go and pick it up on the beach, like, you know, in Canada, Jordy gets a lot red on the beach. That'd be awesome. Now I can do that <clears throat> around here. We got maple, we got ash, you know, there's some pine, but I got to drive more, you know, away from my house to find pine. But we got poplar, we got maple, we got a lot of oak, we got stuff like that. Yeah, you know, we do have American linden, which is really basswood, but you got to look for those too, you know. But cottonwood, <laughs> very rare. I think Erie, I'm in PA. Erie, Pennsylvania has some cottonwood, which is like hours and hours away from me, you know. And I think that's actually pretty thin. So it depends. Montana's got the best, as far as I know. I've never seen bark. Thicker than uh, Montana cottonwood bark. Five, six inches thick. That stuff's awesome. And if you buy it, I bought cottonwood bark. One piece for a commission I had one time. I think I, I bought one piece and I wanted a nice thick piece. So it was about this long, right? But it was that thick. Over It was over six inches, seven inches thick. And, uh, I don't know where I got it. I'm not going to say the name. It was from a carving store, though. You know, like uh, one of the carving places that you could find online. He's, and it was like stupid, stupid expensive. It was like $37 for one piece, you know, because <laughs> it was thick. And I'm like, man, <laughs> you know, uh, how much money do I have to make after I buy a $37 piece of cottonwood and then they ship it and I got to pay for the shipping? What's that carving? It's already up to $40, $50. I got to charge for the carving, you know? So, but if you can get a whole box of it for free, anything you make, you're golden, you know? Or at least cheap. Yeah. Most of my stuff's found wood unless I'm doing cottonwood bark carvings. It always was. Those sticks are found wood. Now that one is a is a cherry stick. Like I said, when I stain that up, that's gonna be. A, I found it, you know. So every now and then I stick another face on it. But after ten faces or whatever I said, eleven faces on it, that would be a good. Even if I said twenty five dollar a face, you know, twenty five bucks. That's that's a lot of faces on one stick. How many people have a, a walking stick that's carved all the way down, you know? So that's that's not too hard to go out and find wood and make stuff. Now you want to make Santas. That's what you do. You go out, you make Santa clauses and you make them on sticks. And I'll show you how easy that is. We got to cover that this week. Cause I really want a Santa challenge and that's going to be what's Christmas Eve is the 24th. I'll have to look at the date, maybe the 22nd or the 23rd. We'll, uh, I don't know what the day is and I don't have a calendar in here. But I like to do it on a weekend and we'll actually have the drawing and we'll give away, you know, whatever we come up with, you know, in the next month. We'll talk during the lives and I'll figure something out and we'll come up with prizes for that for Christmas so we can give stuff away. Raphael. <laughs> Puerto Rico. Welcome, buddy. <laughs> no problem. November 22nd of November, Topper. What is that? Is that a Saturday? Oh, it's nearly Christmas. Yeah, but what day is it? Think about the weekend. Well, the 24th is Christmas Eve, right? Christmas is the 25th here in uh, December. Oh, you're talking in November. 22nd of November in the UK? What? <laughs> it's nearly Christmas. Tuesday. Okay, we could do it like one of those nights. Yeah, like a Tuesday night or a Wednesday night it would be. Yeah, we're going to do a Santa carving. And we could even do that. We're going to make Santa carvings. We'll see how many people enter. Uh, all this month, we'll figure out if you guys want me to buy prizes. You know, we'll start taking donations for that. And we'll see uh, what we come up with. 
and we'll give away a nice Dremel or something, you know. And the Santa carving thing we can also do uh, on eBay too. If you want to do that. But the first eBay thing we're going to do is just do regular found wood. And it's just going to be, I'm going to, whatever I carve in the next project, that's a piece of found wood that when I, you'll see the video, I'm going to put it together now. Where I'm going to walk around, find some found wood, make one wood spirit on it. And everybody can do that. Find a piece of wood and I'm going to put mine on eBay and see, you know, if I can get 20 bucks for it or whatever, you know. That's why I want something pretty decent. Paducah wood? Is that how you say that? Rocky? Out of Brazil. I never heard of it. Ten bucks a foot. Turns a nice red color, huh? Hmm. That sounds different. Yeah, you could always do that. I mean, there's places you can get it. I'm going to take a trip to the craft store, too, and just pick up some regular stupid basswood and maybe some of those eggs. I was looking for them before, and they were sold out. Uh, can make Santa's on eggs, too. But we got to make some. I'm probably going to do some. Well, I'm not going to say what I'm going to do, because then it's just, it's not a surprise. But I, I have a couple ideas in mind for Christmas, you know. And we got to start that challenge now, though. So start making Santas. If you guys are all carvers and you've already been carving, you know, if you're new, watch the channel. You'll get plenty of ideas. Go into some of the old videos. I did some Santa projects. Okay. Uh, I'll probably carve another baseball bat. You know, we'll do a different design and make a Santa on one of them. As a matter of fact, I just got one. We'll do all those projects over. But we'll make some nice ones. Uh, some of my favorite things are just stupid stuff like Santa holding candy canes or Santa riding a candy cane, you know, stuff like that. But those are a little more advanced. We're just going to do some basic ornament stuff so everybody can make ornaments. But I'll show you how to make a couple different ways to do ornaments. And we'll actually put a lot of patterns in the community section. I'll, I'll give you guys lots of patterns. We'll make a bunch of Santa drawings, you know, because you can make them simple, carve them fast and sell them. And that's what's nice about Christmas is if you don't have a lot of time. Ornaments are the way to go. You can blast them out, make a lot of them, and give them to your family, or just sell them quick and take them to a show. Or, uh, well, yeah, craft show. Lots of Christmas shows around during Christmas. They're probably going to start up right after Thanksgiving. If, uh, Rocky already went to one, made 700 bucks, <laughs> which was awesome. And did you really get that idea from watching the live? You never thought of going to a show before, Rocky? Yeah, Rob, you need another Dremel. <laughs> yeah, you, you probably win it, too, knowing you. I don't know. We did have 18 people in. The live went up a little. That's what we need. But we're, we can't do another another drawing till we announce it every day and we get, like, hundreds of people so Rob doesn't win the Dremel or whatever it is we give away. <laughs> because you you... Or something else with those contests, Rob. You did get it from, from the live. That's awesome. Because those carvings build up, right? They build up and they're sitting around. And yeah, I've had carvings sit for so long. Because I did that in the beginning. I did. You know, I'd make carvings. I'd be like, oh, I made that. I want to keep that for me. You know, you end up keeping carvings because you made it. I mean, that was 30 years ago, but still, you know, the first couple you make, you just, you're so proud and you know how long it took you to finally get a good one. And then once you did get a good one, how long did it take you to actually make that good one, you know? And so that's like, oh, I got to keep this. I got to keep this. That's too nice. I don't want to sell it. That's what my buddy Dan's does a lot. You know, he spends a lot of time because, oh, it ain't right. It ain't right. I just talked about that in this video, making this guy. You Do you know how much, whoops. Do you know, like I said in the video, I abandoned this. I would have made, I would have carved this until he was more awesome than awesome if it was just for me. But in the video, what does that get to really just keep going and going? I could have made 10 videos on that and then a whole series on painting it. But I got to move to the next project through YouTube. 
Carvings are abandoned artwork. <laughs> They're never finished. You can always look at it and go, I don't like that. His eyes look stupid to me, but it's a quick, it, it is what it is, you know? But when you have that in the beginning, or you, oh, I made that, I got to keep it. And then you want big bucks for it. Well, that's not a way if you want to make money at it. You better learn how to blast them out and get rid of them and the next one do a little better, you know? Yeah, basswood burns. I'll tell you what burns better, Rob. Pine knots. <laughs> Get some pine knots. I was with Dan the one time and we started my fireplace with pine knots. I was burning a bunch of wood for, uh, you know, for kindling to start the fire. It was the middle of winter. I said, I got to start the fireplace. So, I, of course, out in the carving shop. I said, this is in my house. So I said, all right, I'll get some kindling from the carving shop. So we went out and I said, oh, we could throw a couple of these pine knots in that are, they were old pine knots that I wasn't going to carve because some of them had some bad spots. So we throw <laughs> a bunch of kindling in the fireplace to start it and like four or five of these pine knots. Don't do that. <laughs> it was very bad. I was worried my house was going to burn down that day. That's how much those pine knots burned. The, Flames were coming out of the chimney and stuff. I said, oh, my God, we <laughs> this is bad, you know, and finally it settled down. But they're all light or not. That's how I found out how flammable they were. That was, God, 20 years ago. <laughs> I don't know. But I never put them in my fireplace again. <laughs> yeah. I like Stennett. He makes awesome stuff. We're hat brothers. Got the same hats. <laughs> See, after you're carving for 30 years, you get issued one of these. <laughs> so you guys, if you haven't carved that long, that's why you don't have one of these. I think they just, the carving angels fly them in when, you're, when you hit 30 years. <laughs> Rob can't wait to get his hat. How many years you got to go, Rob? <laughs> So you can be selling your carvings. Nobody bought your, your one-eyed pumpkins. Did you even try to sell them? Yes, then it does make beautiful sticks. You got to give credit where credit's due, right? <laughs> now nah, he's got a little dog. That's all right. That's his buddy, though. My dog's big as me. My dog's, but he's handsome. Yeah. He's a German short hair, my dog, but he's like, you know, <laughs> he doesn't run and hunt as much as he should. <laughs> he's just a bit, well, I got two kids. He grew up with them. They just made him, this is my second German short hair. My first one was, that was my boy. This one, because I raised my first one and he, I trained him to hunt everything else. This one right here was raised with my kids and they gave him cookies and you know he's a big mooch and he didn't want to hunt and they just messed up all his training because they were young and he was a puppy so but my first one brilliant brilliant dog he was like a five thousand dollar dog you know because he was you know dixieland breed i shipped him in from michigan you know and he had a great bloodline he was a good bird dog and you know, and I trained him from a puppy to hunt and he could do everything. He'd find my keys, he'd get my shoes, he'd take my hat off. He'd do anything you told him, that dog understood you. You know, I trained him to do so many things. This one, he's a dumbass. He's just like, oh. <laughs> you know, whoop de doo he's goofy. <laughs> but he's huge. Yep, you can't wear your hat anymore, Rob. Not for another 20 years. <laughs> yeah, my dog. Forget it. As a matter of fact, he's, he's not. He, I don't even want to talk about him. I was disgusted when the kids spoiled him. I said, you know what? There, there goes that dog. You know, no more hunting with him. <laughs> He'd rather sit and eat it. Ah, oh, that dog, nothing like my first one. 
Nothing. My first one lived and breathed hunting. This dog lives to just lay around and, you know, mooch cookies and stuff. <laughs> he just, I told him, don't feed him that stuff. You're going to, you know, but they just undid all his training, you know. Anyway, the, I'll show you pictures of the dog one day. Actually, my mother's dog just died last night. I feel bad. She had a little like a, a Maltese Bichon type. She had him for 12 years. And uh, I got a phone call from her. She was all upset. The dog just, it was walking around real slow for a couple of days and just laying down and not in pain or anything. But it's 12 years old and that's about their lifespan, I guess. And he put her head under the chair and the kitchen table and walked up to it because it hadn't moved in a while. She said, what are you doing? You know? And she was dead, you know. So my 80 year old mother called me. Like, oh my God, you know. And I was like, oh boy. All right. Sorry to hear that, you know. We'll have to. <laughs> so I'm going to take care of it. But uh, yeah, it's just one of those things, you know. Mine, when my last one passed away, oh, you know what it's like to bury a 100 pound dog? He passed away right on the right on my bed right by my side my first journey short hair trying to pick him up and walk him down the steps we had to get the loader out and dig a deep big 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 hole you know on our property to bury him and that was ooh, was not looking forward to this one going because he's a little bigger than my last one that's one thing when you have to do it with a little tiny poodle you know but when you're doing one something that's as big as you <laughs> Mm. But I think I carved my first dog. I carved my first dog. I got to find that carving. Do I have it in here? No. We got to practice those over the winter is doing pets. I think maybe we'll practice just doing them on a, because in the round is too much, even for me. You know, I got to really work on that. But if we could do just pets on plaques, even, you know, that would be a good project. A nice little relief of, of pets because everybody wants their pet done, you know. Now, what's no fun, Rob? Yeah, you do and it's no fun. Oh, well, I could do pets with the CNC. That's easy. <laughs> I don't, I have, I have a $5,000 CNC sitting in front of me. It's like a medium. Can't do an eight foot sheet of plywood on it, but I could do a four foot, you know, and it's almost enough to do two and a half feet wide, three feet. I mean, it's a good size CNC and it's got, let me see. I got potato chips up here on top of it. I have my tape measure. I got some paints <laughs> sitting here in the shop and I'm carving with my chisels and knives and doing YouTube videos. I could have the machine, but I was a machinist before I was a wood carver. So I can machine anything. I can put wood on this machine and I draw so I can make any design and anything I can draw, I can make that machine carve. But, you know. I like to do it by hand. How many people want to watch videos of my machine carving? You know, I'm trying to get, you know. Now I got table saw outside, Rob. You want to come and get it? It's huge. Sitting outside under plastic, getting rained on. It's huge. A grizzly table saw. <laughs> got the band saw underneath my tent. The radial arm saw we got under the deck. because <laughs> I'm in a 12 by 14 shed. <laughs> right my cnc's in here because that's you know expensive got a joiner that we just cleaned up because it was getting rusty sitting outside a grizzly joiner i mean the whole a whole wood shop a cabinet making shop just all sitting around machines everywhere don't use any of them they're all from the shop up in, when i had the shop with dan Ah, uh, yeah. That's a shame. That's a shame, Topper. Yeah, this one just, uh, she was just at the doctor two days ago. 
my mother's dog, just at the doctor. And he said, well, you know, this dog's got diabetes. She's got uh, a stone in her in her bladder. She had a bladder stone, a kidney stone or something. And uh, it was in her bladder, she said, though. I didn't figure a kidney stone. Because she was all she was doing was drinking water for two days. She wouldn't eat. You know, she was gone. Well, they took her to the doctor. And the doctor said, oh, she has diabetes. We get the tests back in another day to confirm everything. And you'll have to put her on insulin twice a day. I said, twice a day for a dog? I mean, I love my dog, but that's a lot, you know. And uh, the tests were going to come back and confirm everything, I guess, today or tomorrow. And that was it. Uh, last night, 2 a.m., the dog was gone, you know. So, what are you going to do? Isn't that how it is? I told my, my daughter that she texted me because she was over my mother's house. That texted me because she was over my mother's house at the time. And I said, yeah, no, no, that's how it is. You go to the doctor, two days later, you're dead. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's about, about the same for dogs, I guess. <laughs> Don't listen to them. I just saw a big report on that. They just said Alzheimer's disease is coming. They're coming out with now they found out it's actually a doctor made disease. We didn't have it 40 years ago, you know. It's from that. And they confirmed it. And they said that it's actually going to be out in the next year. This is what, and killing how many people for how many years? Uh, 6% of the older population, 65 and over, I think, are the stats. And they said it's from doctors telling people, don't eat eggs. Make sure you take the skin off your chicken. Your cholesterol's too high. All this stuff doctors recommend. Here, you needed all that crap to begin with. And it's caused Alzheimer's. And they have proof now. <laughs> so... Everything you listen to, just don't listen to it, <laughs> and you'll be healthy. <laughs> That's not medical advice, for it's just me giving my opinion. Yeah, right. <laughs> Rob wants pets with the CNC. <laughs> I could do that. I could clear the machine off and do some CNC work, but how many people are going to go out and get a CNC so they can do what I teach them on the CNC? <laughs> They're not too cheap. That's a good idea. Carving memorials for pets. Make a little pet tombstone and then carve the little face. That's why I said doing a relief carving would be a real good thing. Do a little... You know, if it's a Labrador, a lab face on it and rest in peace, you know, patches or whatever the dog's name is. It'd probably be a great little side hustle, you know. I've never done that. I should. Leg shed made from a Lego. Was it sometimes you remember, sometimes you don't? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I ran into a friend who was a doctor, and he's like, How old are you now? And I said, Well, well since you know, getting up there, <laughs> we went to school together. He goes, I know how old you are. I was the same. He goes, And you haven't seen me? This was when I was 48. Tell him 60 now, almost, you know. In June, I'll be 60. Right? <laughs> he says, why haven't you been to see me? I'm the only guy you know that's a friend of yours, and I'm a doctor. You know I treat you good. He says, you should be, how many prescriptions are you on? How many prescriptions am I on? I said, I'm only 48. He says, you don't have any prescriptions? <laughs> I said, no, why would I be? He says, everybody at your age and our age is on at least four to five prescriptions. I said, are you kidding me? I don't even like to take an aspirin. I said, see, that's why I'm not sick, because I never went to you and you told me I was. <laughs> that's why I stay away from them, <laughs> you know. <laughs> First thing a doctor tells you is you're sick. And then he wants to give you something, <laughs> you know. No, no. <laughs> no, thanks. I'm good. <laughs> but yeah, he actually told me that. People 48 to 50 years old, he said, your average person is on at least a couple of prescriptions, all the way up to five prescriptions. The only prescription I get is if I have an infection for something and uh, maybe get some antibiotic, but uh I don't know. I don't I don't understand that.
I think, well, in America anyway, they're way too addicted to that stuff. Doc, my butt hurts. I need a pill. You know, <laughs> it's it's ridiculous. That's why they're falling apart by the time they're, you know, in their 50s. Anyway, we're going to start making these things. We're talking about everything but carving, huh? I'm sorry. But nothing else to do. And I said I'd go live anyway. You guys want to come in and yak. It's always fun. Uh, we do have to figure out how to carve live because that's what I would be doing. I'd be surprised that what, Topper? <laughs> I know way too many people. When we <laughs> I could start a whole channel about that. Don't get me complaining about stuff like that. What's in your food? What they're spraying in the air? What they're doing to it? Oh, man, don't even get me started. My channel would get shut down. <laughs> yes, those are different topics. And you definitely don't want to talk politics. <laughs> but uh, what do you guys want to do for Christmas besides ornaments? Let's talk about that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm not stupid, Topper. <laughs> I've been telling people stuff for 30 years. They think I'm a nutball. <laughs> but now it's all coming true you know as i go there there you go the stuff that is going on is ridiculous yeah we better <laughs> anyway what do you got <laughs> you do what do you got uh, for ideas, guys? Besides, so you want to do a pet? We could try a pet. We could try a pet with a Christmas hat. <laughs> a plaque. But we'll do that. We'll carve a plaque. Remind me. We'll get a plaque going with an animal because we've got to do some kind of animal. All right. Everybody wants wood spirits, I know. And we'll go back to that. Santa Clauses are just cheeky wood spirits with a hat. You know, they're pretty easy. You just make them a little happier. You could paint anything like a Santa. You don't have to make them happy. And them somber looking Santas look really cool too. Um, but we're going to do Santa Clauses. We're going to do an eBay challenge. All right. Those are coming up. We're going to have a Christmas challenge. Start making Santas now. And uh, we're going to draw names for that though. Okay. And I want to announce it now to get going on it. So that way you have something to submit and be part of the challenge okay because you the one thing you can't do is just give me a show up on the channel and give me your name if you haven't made a carving i want proof you made a carving to enter it okay so we're starting that now it can be any kind of christmas project you want all right and for those that don't have an idea like i said i'll i'll be carving plenty of things i'm sure rob will, if rob gets the time and he doesn't have to snow plow he'll carve a couple of things Jordy o. Johnson over there, Carbon Fusion. He'll carve a couple of things, you know. Studio on the lake. There's all of us will be carving Christmas stuff, I'm sure, you know. So that's what uh, we'll do. And I'm trying to read. I'm sorry. The nutty ones that make the world interesting. <laughs> There's plenty of nutty people on this channel. If you guys start coming in, you should see half of them. <laughs> see you later, Topper, if you're leaving. But, uh, yeah, we're going to do a bunch of different projects. So you can pick any project you want and make sure that you have it entered before a couple of days before Christmas. It'll probably be around the 22nd, I guess. 22nd, we'll do a drawing. We'll just call that. It'll be like a, a 8 p.m. drawing on our regular live. We'll pull names out. And up to then, we'll keep refining details. I'll, I'll see more and more people. I'll mention it in videos and promote it a lot more. And hopefully, we can get a get a nice prize to give away. Or a couple prizes. All right. And I don't care what you make, you know, unless I can hone the rules down. Take it easy, Topper.
Yeah, try it out. I'm going to make a lot of stuff for Santa. You can do Santa's. We'll do some simple ones. And that's going to start this week. So, right. We'll do simple ones and we'll do some fancier ones. And we'll come up with, you know, a lot of Christmas ideas. Right. So that's what's going to be going on there. This live isn't going to go on too late tonight. We don't really have anything to do. I'm not really carving. Until I can figure out the the setup where I can put another camera and actually carve and see what you guys are saying. I don't want to have to ignore you while I'm carving. I want to be able to have two computers going. So I'll figure that out. Like I said, I'll, I might ask Jordy about it. He'll probably know. And uh, we'll start doing, uh, we'll do a couple of them live, you know. Hey, Tom. Yeah, you learned wood spirits back when I was doing them with the knife, right? Doing branches. I'm going to do some of my best eBay things were, uh, my Santas were on sticks made with the knife. Yep, hand tools. And not paint them like a Santa. And believe it or not, those are some of my favorite things, some of my favorite carvings that I made. Because sometimes you just get a stick that just did a little wiggle or whatever it did, but boy, did it make a nice little Christmas thing, you know? Santa. Take it easy, Topper. <laughs> Snowmen are good. Snowmen are kind of, you can make them interesting too. <laughs> you killed a couple of snowmen, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> you know, snowmen, you can make them very simple. Just make two balls and, you know, carve little eyes and stuff on it. Or you can make them pretty wild and, and dress them in clothes or, you know, there's all kinds of ways to do snowmen. I was never, never really did too many snowmen though. Santa's, a, I couldn't keep up with Santa's. Santa's was really what sell. People buy Christmas decorations, but there's, a, I, I couldn't even imagine how many hundreds of thousands of people collect Santa Claus. So it's always a safe bet if you want to move your stuff reindeer and other stuff it's not that they won't sell but people love santa claus <laughs> yeah that's why wood spirits are fun wood spirits are fun because i was constantly ca carving santa <laughs> yeah i want to do lives actually what i want to do is eventually get a couple other carvers together all right and I mean, I know a few professional carvers, uh, really, really good professionals and not little hacks like me or, you know, some of the, some of the, the things we try to do here. I mean, some of us are pretty good and we get along, but I know some people, phew, all right. But I'd like to get a couple of those guys, talk to them and start Zoom classes and actually have real carving classes where we take a register, everybody comes in, you might pay like, you know. 20 bucks for the class or something and actually have live like you're going to make this project and you're not leaving until you know how to do it type thing you know when we can get everything really big and the lives going and we have enough interest and stuff like that i to do that i'd like to do a couple of uh zoom classes just with the members like i say and just do that myself but actually have professionals come in you know i could teach a class a professional uh Maybe a professional chainsaw carver like Ryan Cook or somebody, you know. I know Dennis Beach, you know. Seven-time world champion and champion in freaking China. You know, he went over there. He went to Russia and he became champion over there. I mean, unbelievable carver, you know. And say, hey, Dennis, you know, I got 20 people that want to learn how to do this. And we're all going to pay you 25 bucks, you know, and, and do a live, you know, or, or Zoom class but a couple times a week, you know, I'm sure I could get a couple of guys that I know to do that stuff. That would be awesome. You know, well, compared to, you know, I'm not a seven time world champion. I mean, I can carve, I can hold my own, but I'm, I wouldn't compare to somebody like that. You know, I was making carvels, <laughs> I was making chainsaw carvings, especially because this guy's a professional world champion, chainsaw car, seven time world champion. This is like ridiculous, you know, and he walked up to my carving. I was carving eagles and I was moving them at the one fair. 
And he walks up and says, hey, come here. You got to critique my, tell me what I'm doing wrong. He goes, that eagle ain't right. <laughs> I said, thanks. <laughs> you know, I know that. You know what I do? He goes, ah, oh, you really effed up the face. He goes, I said, critique, brutal, you know. He's like, oh, you did this wrong. But I learned. But he walked right up there. He's like, oh, man, what is that? He's, he's a chicken, you know. <laughs> Knows his stuff. And he can sit there and blast out like, I mean, these big, huge things. It's a half an hour. And he's got, you know, <laughs> one whole thing done over here. And this big log over here, he cuts that into two or three, two or three pieces. Next thing you know, there's this big bench with carvings all over it. It's like, he amazes me. You know, I watch him every year. Uh, he goes to the fair up here. He does a lot of good stuff. Uh, but I know a couple people like that. I know people that can sit there with a knife and flip chips and just not even look at you and be, oh, look, you know, and just give you a carving within 10 minutes. And it's every little detail, every little hair they did with their knife, you know, some pretty good carvers I ran into over the years. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, some of these guys can teach. You know, well, not everybody can teach. A lot of people can do, but a lot of people can't teach. I learned that. I learned that just with martial artists over the years. I know plenty of guys that are really good, but hey, you should come and, you know, come to my school. We'll let you do a seminar and they, they can't teach. <laughs> you got to be able to explain what you want to somebody to, to teach, you know, how to get it to them up here. And that's not uh, everybody. Unfortunately, even though the guys are really good at it. Like Rob. Rob knows all kinds of crap. Can you teach it, Rob? Half of the stuff that you do in your garage? <laughs> Can you teach a dumbass like me to weld? I'm a wood carver. <laughs> I could actually I don't need you to weld for me, Rob. My dad's a freaking welder. <laughs> but it's something I never did. You know, I can strike an arc. That's about it. Don't ask me to hold it. I don't, I don't know much about that stuff. So that's what we're going to do. All right. Down the road, we're going to try and do stuff like that. You guys got to let me know. Anything to change up the channel, anything to keep us learning. Okay. But tonight, that's probably going to be all the time I'm going to stay on because I'll just sit here and yak and I don't really have anything else for you guys this week. Uh, keep watching the channel. Make sure you check out videos coming up. My eyes hurt with these glasses. I got to change those. Because I'm going to be walking around on the Delaware. Okay. And I'm going to find my found piece of wood that I'm going to put on eBay. That's what those videos are going to be about. So you guys can start following along this week. You can start walking around, start looking for a found piece of wood to make a wood spirit out of. That's going to be our eBay thing. But on the other note, we have a Christmas challenge starting. I'm announcing it right now. It's going to go off on the 22nd. Don't know what the rules are going to be yet. You know, pretty much you're going to just have to have, to have a Christmas item made. All right, for now. <laughs> By the 22nd of December. Start working on projects now. Doesn't have to be any particular project uh, unless I change my mind in, in a couple of days. But uh it's got to be Christmas themed, to put it that way, you know, and because we're just going to draw hats, uh, names out of a hat. So it's not going to be how fancy you make it. It's not going to be, but it'd be nice to have a lot of people doing it because I want to collect pictures this time and put them all on. And I even got to make a little video for the marshmallow on the sticks. I didn't forget you guys that did submit photos. So start working on Christmas stuff. Okay. Because we are going to, we're going to have a, ch a challenge. Not a challenge. It's just going to be a contest, a giveaway for Christmas. And we'll, whoever we draw. And if we have a couple of prizes and we can get donations, you know, we'll, we'll take donations for it. Depends on how much we get. We'll buy a nice prize, you know, for this one. And we'll also have, I'll, I'll throw in a carving, you know, something. We'll figure something out to make it nice for Christmas. All right. So keep ideas up for that start your brains working and make sure you have something to submit. I got mine already. <laughs> I could, I could submit him or, or give him away as a prize after I paint him. And who knows? It's another carving laying around. Okay. I'm sure I'll have plenty more by Christmas, different ones. 
Okay. So good night, guys. I will talk to you later. Hey, Raphael. Take it easy. See you, Rob. See you, Ian. And uh, anybody else? Tom. Everybody's who here. Who's here? Mark Anthony. I'm gonna go get a coffee and figure out what I'm gonna do. I gotta finish putting some videos together. Actually. All right. So I'll see all you guys in the next one. Keep watching the channel. And don't forget to submit some comments when I make a video. Show up. Subscribe if you haven't. A lot of you guys aren't even subscribed. <laughs> Half of the people that are on the channel aren't subscribed. Half of the views. So make sure you subscribe. Hit the like button so you don't miss anything. Because we're going to be doing a lot of stuff. Right? Thanks a lot, guys. Bye, dude. I see you in there. And Ava. <laughs> okay. I go. Yeah, bye. <laughs>